good Tuesday morning, uh, Mount Olive Church and MTO family and everyone watching today. Um, hope you're having a blessed week so far, and uh, I'm going to be filling in for Brother Joe this morning, so hopefully he'll be back with us next week, but I guess today you're, you're stuck with me. So uh, kind of starting out, uh, let me share my screen here. Um, and kind of what we're looking at this week, we're going to be looking back, you know, at week three of, of Pastor's sermons uh, or his sermon on the secret of success, where he talked about from, you know, Nehemiah, where the walls was rebuilt and, and restored. And I really hope that you've been hearing these messages I mean, that TJ has been bringing us. I mean, they're so timely and, and on point. And, and really this Sunday, uh, the message was just no different. And, you know, the, the focus on that uh, was dealing with discouragement. Uh, and you can kind of see on my screen here, I've got the word that I've written in chalk behind it. it says courage, and then you got uh, dis or in there. And so we're going to talk a bit about that today. And, um, you know, I want to start out and just talk a little bit about the symptoms of discouragement that he started with. And, you know, I loved uh, one of the phrases that Pastor said, you know, he was talking about discouragement is coming. So we have to be aware and be ready. Uh, you know, we have all either dealt with it, I mean, honestly, we are dealing with it uh, or we're going to deal with it. You know, it's something that the devil uses uh, to bring about much more evil and sin and despair in our lives when we give over to it. So, um, you know, really honestly, you know, wh what is discouragement? Uh, and I thought about that some and, you know, really, like I said, it, it's it's a kind of it's a noun. Uh, I guess not to do an English lesson, but it's, you know, it's a noun. It really describes a state of being. Uh, it's a loss of confidence or enthusiasm. It's a dispiritedness. You know, and really I looked at it, it was interesting to me, you know, I looked at the prefixes of dis and in, that's why I had that, for discourage and encourage. And, you know, when we look at the, the prefix of, the, of dis, D-I-S, it literally means not or the opposite of. So, you know, when we look at that word discourage, discouragement, it's rooted in the very opposite of what we are called to be in Christ. You know, and what are we called to be? Overcomers. We're more than conquerors. We're able to do all things, you know, and to have the courage, the belief, and the faith in our Lord and Savior who bore our sin. You know, so really the, the word discouragement, this word is used by the devil to really just create uh, and foster a loss of enthusiasm in our walk, uh, a lack of confidence in the talents and the abilities that God has bestowed upon us or entrusted with us, you know, and really just to snuff out our spiritual joy that we have with a close relationship with our Heavenly Father. Uh, you know, really it's to get us to doubt the sovereign God, the creator of the universe, you know, that he can and will work in any situation and really that anything that we may be attacked with, that he's going to be there. But now really on the flip side, we talk about in that, that prefix en, uh, you know, from the word encourage, you know, let's look at just how different that is. In means to put into or onto, uh, to cover or to provide, to cause to be, you know, and that's exactly what Nehemiah spent his time investing in, the encouragement. He didn't listen to the naysayers, those that were there to distract or tear down or destroy. He trusted in the Lord to guide him to finish the work uh, that he began and the work that he was called to do, which was rebuilding that wall. And, you know, he had a plan God's plan, and he stuck to it. And in 52 days, that vision became reality. So I just think, you know, again, that's just a quick thing on that. So uh, again, I want to ask that question. Are we listening to the voice of encouragement or discouragement each and every day? Uh, you know, looking inside in slide, on slide three here, talking about, you know, remaining in the camp. And, you know, this is something that, this you know, from the sermon that stuck with me, and it was Pastor's last point he talked about on Sunday, and it was from his secrets to success, and it was remaining in the camp. You know, we see in these verses in Nehemiah 4, verses 21 and 22, and it says, So we labored in the work. Half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. And then in verse 22, it says, Likewise, at the same time I said unto the people, Let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. And so when you look at these verses, you really can see a theme developing. And kind of if you read them closely, you see um, a we rather than me contained in the scripture. You know, it's the team approach. It's, it's not a solo act. And, you know, they were committed to doing the work, handling their duties, completing the tasks 
together uh, as a group rather than a bunch of individuals. They moved together. They had each other's backs. You know, Pastor yesterday talked about unity. You know, and we see that they remained in the camp together. They stayed within the walls of Jerusalem together. And that's such a great point and thought for us in the church today. You know, as a body of believers, you know, we really, really, we need that togetherness, the personal connection of being together in God's house, worshiping, supporting one another, uh, just like what took place with the work of rebuilding the wall. They did it together, everyone doing their part and in unison. Um, you know, and I thought, I thought Pastor just had such a, a great, beautiful example, uh, you know, with the boy trying to break that group of sticks. You know, and if you were there, you saw it online, you saw he had those sticks there and and really how the, you know, the story told the boy couldn't break it when they were as a group, when they were attached together, when they were latched together as one group. But as soon as they were unlatched and pastor showed us that he unlatched those, those sticks and, and, and they were separated and you brought one out. We saw how easily one twig was snapped right in half, right in two. And so really, you know, I want to just take a moment of reflection, you know, and, and, and challenge you to ask yourself, you know, we all ask ourselves, what is it that we're attaching ourselves to? you know, like that group of sticks. What are, we, what are we latching on to? Is it our brothers and sisters, our church family? You know, or are we looking uh, to the things of this world, the things that only want to distract us? Which one really is our camp? Where, where are we pitching our tents? Uh, and what are we allowing inside our walls? Um, you know, with those things that we're doing and, and where we're residing and as far as what we're letting inside our walls, will those things make us stronger by uniting us or is it going to make us weaker, uh, tear us down by dividing us in our homes? Think about this in our homes, in our marriages, our ability to parent or lead our family, you know, even to work within the church. Are we allowing things in that's building us up and promoting togetherness or is it things that's tearing us down, and dividing us and really you know, are we working within the church in order to, to fight for one another or rather than not with and against each other? You know, that's just some questions to think about. You know, and I, just, I guess I want to say this, you know, let's not kid ourselves. Uh, really today, the devil's out there. Uh, he's crafty, he's subtle, and he's going to use anything, even in the form of discouragement, to pull us away. Discouragement, distractions, you name it, he's going to use it. And really something I thought about to kind of prove my point I wanted to give you guys some quotes uh, from a book I read a while back. I know pastors read it too, but it's the Screw Tape Letters uh, by C.S. Lewis. And, and kind of if you, if you, a lot of people may have heard of C.S. Lewis, uh, but if you've never heard of this book, you know it kind of centers. It's a little bit different, but it centers around the viewpoint um, from a demon uh, named Screw Tape, and he's writing letters to his nephew, uh, and his, he's an under his nephew's Wormwood, and he's his understudy, and Screw Tape is trying to guide his nephew's efforts um, to discourage and ultimately to defeat and overtake a, a human, a person, a mortal that he's been assigned to, to, to steal his soul. Uh, and it really, this book, it's, it's like I said, it's a unique take, but it gives us that behind the scenes look really just at the lengths the devil will take to steal souls uh, and to plot to take as many as he can with him to hell one day. It's very, very eye opening. Uh, and it really makes a person stop and think. So I wanted to share just a few quotes with you from these from this book. And if you can kind of look at them, you know, it will give you an interesting thing. You know, of course, when when you see the word enemy, that's the devil referring to God. So it says all extremes except extreme devotion to the enemy are to be encouraged. And I want you to think again, thinking that from what the devil's telling the people that's working for him, all extremes except extreme devotion to the enemy are to be encouraged. Encourage them to take everything else to extremes except devotion to God. Another quote says, there's nothing like suspense and anxiety for barricading a human's mind against the enemy. Fill our minds with suspense and anxiety against God. And then it says, another quote says, indeed, <clears throat> excuse me, the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. And it says, there are things for humans to do all day long without his minding in the least, his meaning God, sleeping, washing, eating, drinking, loving, playing, praying, working. 
Everything, though, has to be twisted before it's any use to us. Man, think about that. Twisting anything before we can use it has to be twisted. Then this last one I've got, it says, never forget. Never forget what we, uh, that when we are dealing with any pleasure, never forget that when we are dealing with any pleasure in its healthy and normal and satisfying form, we are, in a sense, on the enemy's ground, on God's ground. It says, I know we have won many a soul through, through pleasure. All the same, it is his invention, not ours. God invented the pleasure. He made the pleasures. All our research so far has not enabled us to produce one. See, the devil, the enemy, they can't produce a pleasure. All we can do, all the enemy can do, all Satan can do, is encourage the humans to take the pleasures which our enemy has produced to be used in ways or in degrees which he has forbidden. And that's a great reminder how the devil can and will use innocent or good intended pleasures to do his evil work. God makes the things in our life for us that's pleasurable, but the devil wants to take it and use it and twist it and us get so entangled in it and to use it in ways or to such a, a, a level that it's against what God intended. So it's just something to think about, something really different to show you like how the devil can work on us, in us, around us. And I say that because I had some scripture, a couple of scriptures here just to add uh, to some pieces. Uh, the first one is First Peter 5 and 8, and it's, this is more of encouragement to us. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Church, we have to be alert. We have to be alert. Be on guard, watching, just like Nehemiah. We have to be working and prepared and ready for battle at any moment. But again, we must be doing it together. Together. The second verse, John 10 and 10, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And we see in this scripture right here, God's plan for humanity versus the devil's. Opposite ends with very different looking outcomes. And yet, for me, you know, I, I say this, we struggle in serving, doing, going, and trusting. I mean, look at the two outcomes here. And I say, go, you know, going back to when I first started this devotion, uh, you know, kind of we had our mini English lesson there. And we we're talking about, you know, the words discouragement and encouragement and those prefix words of, of dis and, and in, you know, the root meanings of those words, what those prefixes meant and how that, you know, they two were opposite ends from one another, what they, what they entitled, what they meant. And in this same context, we can rest assured that God uses one while Satan uses the other. And I mean, we know God is, is one for encouragement while Satan is one for discouragement. And so I ask you today, which one has a hold of your life today? Are you living a life with encouragement or discouragement? And I say that because if it's discouragement, one great fix for that is to get inside the walls Get inside and remain in the camp and be in the house of God with your church family. There's nothing like that personal connection. Pastor said that on Sunday too. There's nothing like a personal connection for us to remain grounded in our faith and get what we need to grow. Absolutely. And so today, I, I hope you've gotten something out of this. I know it might be a little bit different, but I'll, as always, I want to leave you guys with a song. Uh, and and I, like I said, I end this as usual. Uh, and it's kind of a new one. It's Casting Crowns has put out a, a, a new record with some new songs. And this is one from it. It's called Healer. And, you know, I really kind of set the tone as you listen to it. I want you to ponder this question. What do you think you need in your life? Do you need walls rebuilt, things restored? Uh, maybe you need to be encouraged rather than discouraged. If so, I challenge you when you listen to this song, think about that because this song gives us the answer to what we need in our life. And we need the healer. And I just want to share right quick with you just some of the lyrics. It says, we need the healer. We don't need another hero. We need the healer. Deep down, every hurting heart knows we need the healer. And only Jesus is the healer. More than comfort, we need the king. More than gifts, we need the giver. 
More than blessings, we need your presence. More than the healing, we need the healer. Man, Olive, I hope today that if you don't know the healer that you find him, and you'll fall in and ask him into your heart, but I pray that together we, as unity and remaining in the camp together, we can do great and mighty things for the Lord, for him. So today I pray that you're encouraged, you're not discouraged, that you have a blessed rest of the week, and we hope to see you soon. We love you.